the Romans are coming. Okay, so welcome to today's history lesson all about the Romans. And it is all about the start of the Roman campaign in Britain. And why did they come to Britain? So this is our new topic about the Romans. So very, our very first activity. What do you already know about the Romans, Roman Britain and the Roman Empire? Pause the video on a bit of paper, write down everything that you know already. Pause it now. Okay, welcome back. And what we're going to do today is we're going to learn about what happened when the Romans came to Britain. And we're going to answer the question specifically, why did the Romans invade Britain? Now, there will be some resources coming with this video, but what you need to do is you need to follow on with this video. You'll need a bit of paper and a pencil, or you can do it on a Google Doc if you would like. But follow on and I will be giving you instructions as we start. So these are the things that we need to be able to do by the end of this lesson. We can describe some details about the Roman invasion. We can provide some valid reasons why the Romans wanted to invade. And we can understand that there were differing viewpoints about invading Britain. So did everybody agree that invading Britain was a good idea? Let's find out. So to start with your first activity, here are some keywords. Let me just move me out the way. But here are some keywords that are going to help you with today's lesson. We've got invade, invasion, conquer, republic, empire, emperor, status, glory, barbaric, and legacy. Don't worry too much about the word status. I've removed that one from the next slide. So don't worry about that one. Uh, what I'd like you to do now is I'd like you to keep this screen open and I'd like you to go and look up, find out what each of those words mean and write the definitions on your piece of paper. Pause the video now. Okay, welcome back. Did you find out the meanings of those words? Let's have a look now and see if you got it right. Let's talk through them. So, to invade is to enter with the purpose of occupation. For example, if you are invading uh, Mr. Perry's office, you would be storming the door down. You'd be going in there with the idea that you're gonna stay in there. You're gonna be the head teacher for the day. So therefore an invasion, the next word is the act of invading. So if, if it is an invasion, it is when people are invading, when they are attacking or they are entering somewhere else with the purpose of occupation. The next word, conquer. That means to overcome and take control. It basically means win, to defeat the occupiers. So if you beat Mr. Perry uh, and you make him leave his room, that would be conquering Mr. Perry's room. The next one, a very important word in Roman history, a republic. It is a form of government where power is held by the people and their elected representatives. Oh, excuse my typo there. Uh, the next one, empire. An empire is a group of nations or peoples under one ruler or government. The Roman Empire is a perfect example of this. An emperor is the male ruler of an empire. So Caesar, Julius Caesar would be an emperor. Barbaric, of or resembling barbarians, savage, primitive or brutal. That means not very nice people. So if they are savage, it means that they are primitive or brutal. Uh, legacy means anything that is passed down from ancestors or someone who came before. So see if you got all of those correct. Uh, and then let's move on. So this is our important knowledge before we move on to this lesson. I may move myself around as we read this. So feel free to pause and read yourself or you can listen to me read it. It is believed that the city of Rome was founded in 753 BC. It became a republic in 509 BC and the empire was established in 27 BC with the first emperor, Augustus. At its most powerful, the empire controlled over one fifth of the world's population. Julius Caesar had attempted to invade Britain in 55 BC and 54 BC. On the first occasion, he was forced back by bad weather, treacherous terrain and the fierce Celts. If you want to pause it there and have a look up, look up what the Celts are, who the Celts are, that's a really good place to start. The second attempt to invade started well. 
Evidence suggests that he got as far north as the River Thames, but he had to return due to problems at home, so back in Rome. In 10 BC, Claudius became emperor, and as well as wanting to seize British resources, that means the stuff they had in Britain, he also needed a victory to strengthen his position at home. He was particularly worried as his predecessor, so that means the emperor that came before him, Caligula, was murdered. He also claimed that the Celts had been helping his enemies, the Gauls. He used an appeal for help from one of the leaders of the Celtic tribe called the Verica as an excuse to invade. In 43 AD, an army of over 40,000 Romans landed in Richborough. Have a look. If you can pause it now and have a look on Google Maps to find where Richborough is, that will help you picture and visualise the Roman invasion, where it was, where it happened. The Catuvelani tribe was defeated and the Romans seized the tribal capital of Colchester. Also, have a look at where that is. They now had a solid base to invade the rest of Britain. The last tribes were defeated and Britain became part of the empire, empire by AD 77. The Romans remained in Britain until 410 AD. Now, there are parts of Roman Empire that actually remain to this day and we're going to learn a little bit about that today. Let's move on. So first question, have a look at all of these. What do you think they all have in common? Pause the video, talk to someone with you, write it down or just have a think. What do you think they all have in common? If you're not sure what one of them are, look them up. What do they all have in common? Okay, pause the video. Okay, ready for our, our, our answer. So they all, things that were introduced into this country by the Romans that we can still see around us today. If you go to Canterbury, there are fantastic examples of things we can see. There are lots of different things all around Kent that you can see that the Romans left behind. Uh, you might have to look quite carefully though. Our aim is to decide if the Romans always had a positive impact. Now, where do the Romans fit into our timeline? So you can see here the year zero, then we are all the way over here, 2020. And then it goes right the way back, 3000 BC and further back into, uh, further back than that. So the year 3000, uh, we, we've been learning, uh, we've learned about Stone Age, Bronze Age and Iron Age. See if you can work out where they would fit. Would they all fit on there or do they go off our timeline? Let's have a look. So where do the Roman and Celtic timelines overlap? The Celts are important because obviously they were the occupiers of Britain before the Romans arrived. So this is Stone Age to Iron Age here, going up to just before the year zero. And Roman Britain, uh, oh, Roman Britain appears here. So before back to about 500 BC through to about uh, 100 AD. So you can see there is a little bit of an overlap right about here between uh, 500 BC and about 100 AD. So the next little task is to have a look at this. Now this is a map of pre-Roman Britain and it shows the Celtic tribes uh, now, you may recognise a few names. The Brigantes is one that people may know. Uh, but the key one that most of us will probably recognise here in East Anglia is the Iceni. Now, is there a famous person who was a member of the Iceni? Okay. And the last thing to look at is what is the tribe that would have lived in the area where we live now? Now, we live in the southeast in Kent. So we've got the Kent tribe down here. Let's move on. So how does it look different to modern Britain? Obviously, modern Britain is divided up into counties. Uh, this pre-Roman Britain was divided up into where its tribes were based. So and you can have a look, feel free to pause the video and have a look in more detail there. Next, so this is the Roman Empire and it starts to give us a picture of why the Romans wanted to invade Britain. Now, if you look here, 
pause the video and have a look and see if you can recognize where some of these places are. But I'm just going to talk through the map very quickly. So here is Rome right here. And uh, that's where it all started. You can see here the Roman Empire covers France, covers Spain, covers all of North Africa. And then it goes into uh, here past Jerusalem, Antioch, uh, then Turkey or modern day Turkey. Then we have Greece, uh, Croatia, uh, Bulgaria, all of these kind of areas, Switzerland. Now, up here, well, let, let's start down here. So can anybody think, why might the Roman Empire stop here? What is there here that might stop them going any further south? North Africa. Have a look on Google Earth. See if you can work out what it is. And up here and here, there are there's something else that would stop the empire going any further. And also here. Now, that then left Britain, left England as the next place to, for them to take. Because obviously, here is sea. Can't go any further because uh, the ships weren't good enough to cross the Atlantic at this point. Uh, well, not reliably. Uh, okay, so down here, we've got the Sahara Desert, as well as here is is, is not ideal terrain for uh, for an army. Here and here is mountains. And then we have immense forests and the Germanic tribes, which were uh, incredibly hard to defeat here. Uh, so the Romans decided that the next best thing to do was to cross the sea and come to England. So up here. So here is an image. Obviously, it is not uh, from the time. Here is an image of the Romans landing in Britain. So here we see the Romans and the British, uh, the British population. Now, what can you tell about the British population from this image? Now, it's not completely accurate. It's not completely reliable, uh, which means that it may not be completely accurate to history. But from this picture, what can we tell about what this artist believed the people of Britain were like? Now, I can see from here. Actually, I'm not going to say anything yet. Pause the video, write down all the things that you can think of that uh, this picture shows about the people of Britain versus the Romans. What are they like and what are they like? What can you tell me about it? Pause the video there. OK, so now I'm going to talk through my thoughts. So the first thing I can see is that these guys look quite organised. It's got nice rows of things, uh, rows of spears, rows of shields. Uh, which shows quite they're quite organized to me. They've also arrived on what looked like quite fancy landing craft, which means they're probably quite rich because they've been able to afford to make those. They've also got a leader here who seems to be organizing the troops. So again, that's more evidence that they're organized. Over here, however, we look at the Britons and this looks, they've got spears, swords, shields, the same as the Romans, but they just look slightly, in terms of their what they're wearing, this looks a little bit less uh, fancy, essentially. Uh, they're also throwing rocks. It seems to be much more of a barbarian style uh, of, of soldier here. Okay, there's lots more to take from that, but those are my initial thoughts from looking at it. Romans rich, organized, uh, well drilled, Whereas the Britons look from this image like they're much less organised, much poorer people, uh, not organised at all. OK, so a timeline of Roman Britain so far. 55 BC and 54 BC, Julius Caesar invaded twice unsuccessfully. Next, 43 AD, Claudius mounts a successful invasion of Britain. Throughout our topic, we'll be adding to this timeline. Now, this is a map that shows what the Romans knew about Britain. It shows actually, from, for, in my opinion, it shows that they knew quite a lot about Europe, but beyond Europe started to become quite 
are, are unaccurate. It's, it's not very accurate once they move outside of Europe. Now, that's not surprising because bear in mind, they didn't have any aeroplanes or satellites to look over the land. They were just doing it based on eyesight from head height or as high as they could climb. So this is quite an impressive map of Europe, really, I would say. So here is an account from a geographer. Now, this is a really going to be a really important task. So this is a, an account from someone called Strabo, and he was a Roman geographer. So that means he studies the geography of the land, geography of the people, that kind of thing. He knows about places or is, is his job is to study places and learn about them. Now, he, know, he didn't go to Britain to write this. He spoke to travellers who had been. Now, for this task, we're going to read it. And what you need to do is you need to pick out all the things that you can learn about Britain from Strabo's account. So I'm going to read it or you can pause and read it yourself. There are only four passages that are habitually, that means regularly, used in crossing from the mainland to the island. Those which begin at the mouths of the rivers, the Renus, the Sequina, the Liga and the Garumna. However, the people who put to sea from the regions that are near the Renus make the voyage, not from the mouths themselves, but from the coast of those Marini, who have a common boundary with the Menapi, Menapii. On their coast also is Itium, which, is def which the deified Caesar used as a naval station when he set sail for the island. He put to sea by night, so that means he set off at night, and landed on the following day about the fourth hour. So after four hours, thus having completed 320 stadia in his voyage across, and he found the grain still in the fields. Most of the island is flat and overgrown with forests, although many of its districts are hilly. It bears grain, cattle, gold, silver and iron. These things, accordingly, are exported from the island, as also hides and slaves and dogs, which are by nature suited to the purpose of the chase. The Kelti, however, use both these and the native dogs for the purposes of war too. So from that first paragraph, what can we learn that the Romans find interesting about Britain? What can we learn about Britain from Strabo's account in that first paragraph? Pause the video there. Okay, let's move on to the second paragraph. What can we learn from this? The men of Britain are taller than the Kelty and not so yellow haired, although their bodies are of looser build. The following is an indication of their size. I myself in Rome saw mere lads towering as much as half a foot above the tallest people in the city, although they were bandy legged and presented no fair lines anywhere else in their figure. Their habits are in part like those of the Kelty, but in part more simple and barbaric. So much so that on account of their inexperience, some of them, although well supplied with milk, make no cheese, and they have no experience in gardening or other agricultural pursuits, and they have powerful chieftains in their country. For the purposes of war, they use chariots for the most part, just as, as some of the Kelty do. The forests are their cities, for they fence in a spacious circular enclosure with trees which they have felled, and in that enclosure make huts for themselves and also pen up their cattle. Not, however, with the purposes of staying a long time. Their weather is more rainy than snowy, and on the days of clear sky, fog prevails so long a time that throughout a whole day the sun is to be seen for only three or four hours round about midday. And this is the case also among the Marini and Manapii and all the neighbours of the latter. So what you need to do is read through Strabo's account and write down all the things that we can learn. Imagine we're a Roman. What could we learn about Britain or what he thinks about Britain or what he's learned about Britain from his account? So just a little clue. So you have to get it by sailing. Uh, let's read through some more. However, the people who put sea regions are near the regions make the voyage, not from the mouths. So also we can learn here that Caesar made a naval base uh, near Itium, for, which is where he set off to go to Britain. So what you need to do is read through this account and write down all the things that we can learn about Britain from it. OK, good luck. Pause the video. Off we go.
Okay, some answers. So we can learn that Caesar had a naval base, as we said, near Itium. Uh, Caesar traveled by night and landed the day after. Um, when he got there, there was grain in the fields. Uh, we can also learn about the geography. Most of uh, Britain, they believed, was flat and covered with woodlands, so lots of forests. Uh, but there were also lots of hills, not mountains, but hills. Uh, it has grain, cows, gold, silver and iron. And there are also, and they use them to make hides. That's kind of like, like animal skin, basically, to use as clothes. Uh, they have slaves uh, and dogs, which are not just used as household pets. They are also used in war. Uh, now. Also, we can learn that the men of Britain are taller than the Celt, uh, than, than the Kelty, and not as blonde, uh, but they are not quite as strong. But we can also learn that they are a little bit slimmer, and they behave very much like the Celts, uh, but they're a little bit more simple in terms of their life. They're, they're, they're a bit more barbaric. Uh, they are not good at gardening or agriculture. So that means they're not great at growing things, but they do have powerful war leaders uh, who use chariots. Um, also, they live in the forests and they fence in circular areas for them all to live in uh, in the forested areas. Uh, the weather of Britain is mostly rain, no, not much snow. Uh, and it is very rare to have a clear sky with no rain. So there are only three or four hours of sun around midday, which is about the same as it is today. So let's move on. So the Roman conquest. So after, were, were the people, were the Roman people happy about the invasion of Britain? Now, after the conquest, the Senate that means the, the kind of the, the, the government of Rome ordered two triumphal arches to be built after the conquest. And what does that tell us about the Romans reaction to the conquest? Now, to me, that tells me that they were pretty happy about it if they built something. So the inscription praises Claudius as having received into surrender 11 kings of the Britons conquered without loss. And he first brought the barbarian peoples across the ocean under the authority of the Roman people. Now, I think that tells me that they were pretty happy about it. OK, and that is the end of our information about the Roman invasion of Britain today. Now, let's just jump back to what we were trying to learn from this. Now, we were trying to describe some details about the Roman invasion. Now, we learned a few things about it, not too much. We can provide some valid reasons why the Romans wanted to invade. So that comes from our reading of Strabo's account about what the Romans wanted. And we can understand that there were differing viewpoints. Now, we haven't talked about that too much. So I, well, your final follow up task is why might people not want to invade Britain? And why might they want to invade Britain? OK, and what's your opinion? Thank you very much. Upload any work onto our Google Classroom stream and I look forward to seeing what you've learnt about the Roman invasion of Britain. Thank you very much. Bye bye.